Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot 'em Up Saturday, and on the menu this week we have Terra Flame, a classics inspired schmop. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. From developer Teradine Games, Terra Flame originally released for PC in November of 2022. Now, in April of 2023, it's received a Nintendo Switch port, and that's the version we're looking at today. So this title is one that I've really enjoyed my time with, and can it, it can best be summed up as by saying it's heavily inspired by the Thunder Force franchise. So if that's something that you enjoy, then I encourage you to check out this title, as I think it's one that would be up your alley. But if you enjoy horizontal scrolling shoot 'em ups in general, I think this one is worth at least a look. With all that said, diving into the game itself, so you do have the ability to go through a tutorial, but the basic controls and systems are pretty simple in this one. Under options, you can change between two soundtracks at this point, so keep that in mind. There is an original or a chiptunes version. Starting the game, we have the option of playing in either arcade or caravan, and there's three difficulties with normal basically being your easy difficulty. Once you select that, you're taken to your stage select, which you can start with any stage you've previously unlocked. Starting the game, right off the bat you can see here that the top display is very reminiscent of um, the Mega Drive era um, shoot 'em ups which is what this title really does feel heavily inspired by. Although it does have a mix of um, modern to it as well, which is uh, very appreciated. So our fighter itself has... Um, in addition to the usual horizontal scrolling movement, we've got three weapons which fortunately are always equipped. Uh, they do power up from level 1 to level 3, so if you die you're reset, but it doesn't feel as devastating as like uh, some um, deaths can potentially be from some shoot 'em ups So as far as our weaponry is concerned, we've got our forward shot, our rear shot, and our search shot. So, um, very reminiscent of the um, twin shot, the back shot, and the uh, hunter from the Thunder Force franchise. Uh, there are situations where you'll be called upon to use um, both, although for uh, both forward and rear facing, but for the most part for the forward, I generally tend to stick to the um, search as I feel like it does an excellent job of um, homing in for the most part on the enemies that you need to uh, take out in front. Now throughout the course of our gameplay you might have noticed there are several different power-ups we've picked up and in the first stage they're very generous with what they give you. So already at this point we're at full weapon power. Uh, we've picked up the uh, defender which basically acts as your shield and can, it can take three hits before it's um, fully exhausted. There's also um, the P's for the power-ups, and uh, the most important one is your R, or like um, the rolling unit. So what the rolling units basically are are a pair of rotating uh, um, options similar to the Thunder Force Claws. And not only do they provide additional firepower, they also provide powered up. Uh, let's see, uh, firepower. So there's a charge uh, bar in the bottom right of the screen. As long as you're not firing that uh, and you have the rolling unit, that will charge up, making your shot significantly more powerful. Uh, you can continue to fire without uh, any problem once the meter is depleted, your shot's just not like as strong. Um, so for the straight shot and your back shot, that doesn't matter as much as you're still focusing your fire on the enemies, but it does for the search shot, so that's something to keep in mind. So at the end of your stage, once you've defeated the boss, you get the, that uh, summary of your score, and that brings us to the game's scoring. So overall, the scoring for this title is relatively sim simplistic. We build up a chain for every enemy we defeat, and uh, once like the chain uh, counter in the top right runs out, we receive a score for uh, 100 points for every enemy that uh, was part of that chain. Uh, there are um, things like these, like uh, fireballs and asteroids that don't count towards the, the chain building, so keep that in mind. In addition, when we defeat waves of enemies or certain like uh, singular enemies like uh, these mechs, they'll uh, drop crystals, and those crystals count towards end of stage scoring. 
Uh, but one important part to note is that if you happen to lose a life uh, at any point, you'll lose those um, crystals. Um, if you are, happen to be at the very front of the screen, there's a chance you might be able to catch them as you respawn, but uh, most likely uh, those crystals will be lost. So that's one of the big ways that you can potentially build a high score run on this game is you know, trying to figure out the timing to build up your um, uh, enemy chain combo as well as uh, not dying so you just have those crystals at the end of the stage. And that's basically Terraflame served up for your enjoyment. Um, there is a somewhat jarring um, time freeze whenever you are hit, whether or not you have your shield or not, so that's something to keep in mind. And sometimes it can be a bit confusing even where the shots came from, as uh, you're more most likely to get hit when the screen is really busy with uh, enemy objects, your own sh uh, firepower, and... Um, the shots that would obviously deal the damage to you. So here's another minor complaint that see that I have. There are some reused bosses throughout the course of the gameplay. So stage two's boss is basically just an improved version of the stage one boss. Um, it's not that big of a deal breaker as this is really the only time that we see that until we get to kind of like a mayor's on parade um, uh, section towards the end of the game where you do see a lot of the bosses reused but I do feel it's like a worth of the stage uh, to note that the stage does reuse the boss from the first stage just with the new bag of tricks so the bag of tricks being he hops onto the back side of the screen forcing you to use your back shot rather than just the forward shot so as far as the minus flavors are concerned for this game, you might have noticed that there's uh, scrolling scaffolding at both the top and, or um, maybe like uh, some sort of like frame at both the top and bottom of the screen. Uh, through most of the stages in the game, those are present, and I believe the idea is that they're helping provide this feeling of motion, but I kind of wish that they weren't always there as it gives uh, most of the stages kind of a samey feel to them. Um, and like uh, the enemy variety is not huge as well, so when you take that into account, uh, it does like uh, kind of give everything just that same um, vibe. Um, and then there's also like a problem that I have with like uh, the sound design, where some of the like uh, background sound effects can get a little bit annoying. Specifically, the sound for your um, weapon charging back up whenever you're not firing, that uh, almost always feels like it's present in the background, and um, I almost feel like it would have been nice if there was just an indication when you were at full rather than the sound effect for the entire meter charging up. Uh, this is like a less of a, a overall problem and something that I thought would uh, just be fun. Um, the weapons are very streamlined, just having the front, the back, and the search. Um, but in a true Thunder Force-esque fashion, uh, having a couple more weapon options I think would have been pretty neat as uh, some of the other weapons that are in the Thunder Force series, like the Waves for example, are some of the ones I really enjoy playing with or the free wave, that's, I see those sort of weapons. Um, but uh, as is, I do feel that like the overall tight uh, weapon design at least helps um, increase the enjoyment of the game itself. But as far as the plus flavors are concerned, so I really do enjoy the soundtrack, specifically the chiptune soundtrack. It definitely has that um, Genesis Mega Drive uh, FM synth feel to it. So, like, uh, it helps um, kind of um, give you that uh, sense of era immersion. There's also just the fact that, like, uh, though um, it has a, like, a heavy dose of the modern, there is uh, kind of that retained classic feel of a good um, era specific uh, horizontal scrolling shoot em up. So, with that said, Terraflame is definitely a title that I can recommend for fans of the Thunder Force series and uh, 90s era horizontal scrollers. And uh, if you liked what you've seen here, then it's uh, worth looking into. Um, Tetting games, it's not the, not necessarily the best Tetting game that I've like uh, played, but 
I, I still do feel that it's uh, worth a look. And their titles do go on sale on both Steam and the Switch fairly frequently, so that's some potentially something to watch out for. Alright, that'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful week, and we look forward to seeing you again next time.